Well, howdy, you flea-bitten varmints. Join me in this video where we balance the eye spindle to 25 degrees in pure water. Yeehaw! <laughs> Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. Today I'll be showing you how to calibrate the eye spindle to 25 degrees in pure water. You may be asking yourself why you have to do this in the first place, and let's start by coming over to opensourcedistilling.com forward slash eye Click on the link for the official eye spindle homepage. Scroll down a bit and find the link for the English documentation. Scroll down to the table of contents and click on FAQ. You can see that the very first frequently asked question is about calibrating to 25 degrees in pure water. More information can be found in the link to the blog post in the description down below. Calibrating to 25 degrees is required and usually a deviation of plus or minus 5 degrees tilt is often acceptable. That means in order to calibrate we should get the eye spindle between 20 to 30 degrees in pure water. In this video I'll consider plus minus 2 degrees as acceptable. I'll also be calibrating two different versions of the eye spindle. We'll be doing first the Jeffrey and secondly, we'll be doing Cherry Phillips uh, PCB 4.0. My calibration process is going to go a little something like this. First, I'm going to find a perfectly level surface. Next up, I'm going to do an offset calibration. If you don't know how to do this, I'll leave a card in the corner and a link in the description down below. Once offset calibration is completed, we just plunk it into water, wait for it to stop moving, and record the tilt value. I'll be grabbing the tilt value from the eye spindle info page. I calibrated a total of five eye spindles in the Jeffrey version. They all came in at around 23 to 27 degrees in pure water. However, there was one that did come out to 28.63 degrees, and that is more than two degrees deviation. So I went about taking some nuts I got from Home Depot and these guys weigh somewhere about 2.8 to 2.9 grams. And I'm going to affix these as weights to the Jeffrey Eichbindel PCB. Number one, guys, always remove the battery. Not only does removing the battery make the eye spindle easier to handle because the top of the battery holder is flat, it adds a safety measure so you don't accidentally short something out on the eye spindle and damage it. Now that the nuts are installed, we have to move the battery to tune the tilt to 25 degrees in pure water. I start by heating up the bottom pad. As you can see, I'm not really getting that good of heat transfer, and I go ahead and add a little dollop of solder. The liquid solder that I add will act as a means of heat transfer and speed the process along. As I'm heating up, I'm taking my other fingers and kind of in a pinching action, creating upward force on the battery holder. I'm just applying that little bit of force as I'm heating the solder pad. On the top pad, I try and kind of cut a corner here and I try and just slide the battery holder up as I'm heating it to the five millimeter position, 
but um, doesn't really work so well. So I'm going to recommend that we fully remove the battery holder and then smooth out the solder pads as seen on screen. We can then reinstall the battery holder in the desired position. There is a ruler on the printed circuit board to help you guide the position. And in the five millimeter position, the eye spindle floated at 23.95 degrees tilt. And that is within our plus minus two degrees of deviation. Next up is the Cherry Philip PCB 4.0. Just want to start off by saying that I had issues with getting this to 25 degrees in pure water, but I have spoken with many people on the internet where this circuit board just floats at 25 degrees without any modification whatsoever. But I know it's not just me as I have spoken with other people and other people are having this issue as well. I did actually speak with Cherry Phillip back and forth, and through emails and communications, we weren't able to figure out what the issue was. So I just want to make sure that you guys know that the Cherry Phillip PCB 4.0 works for many, many, many people. But personally, it just didn't work for me, but we did get within the acceptable range of calibration in pure water, as we'll see in this video. Another thing to note is I'm not using the officially supported battery holders in my version of the Cherry Phillip PCB 4.0. So my inability to balance to the exact tilt in pure water may be somehow dependent on that, but I'm not sure. I also want to give a giant shout out to Cherry Phillip for inspiring me to make my own circuit board that suited my needs better. Cherry Phillip, if you're listening, thank you so much, you the man. I'm going to show you a method where we file down the printed circuit board, but on my blog post linked down below in the description, there is an alternative method if you're interested. I have two of these Cherry Phillip boards, and I ended up doing the same thing for both of them. I took the battery out, and I filed them all the way down to the USB charger port on the top. I then took my soldering iron and melted down the on off switch. Finally, I took some packing foam and put a little bit into the petling in the bottom. And what that does is it pushes the entire assembly further up the petling. And what that does is it increases the degrees tilt in pure water. The final tilt for these eye spindles was 20.43 and 20.48 degrees in pure water. Although those values aren't quite as good as the Jeffrey, they are still within the plus minus 5 degrees stated in the official eye spindle FAQ. In conclusion, we calibrated 7 eye spindles today. If you want to see the specifics and all the numbers, link to my blog in the description down below. Hi there! Thanks for making it to the end of this video. If you have any alternative methods of balancing the eye spindle, leave them in the comments down below. Hope you're having a great day, and I love each and every one of you very, very much.